Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Knife from the Dark. And right after the story, Blackstone will show you tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. Rhoda, stand back there against that panel. That's right. And now, Don, if you'll turn the lights off. What are you going to do, Blackstone? He's going to throw knives at me in the dark. What? Oh, come now, Blackstone. Nobody can be sure enough of their aim to throw knives at someone in the pitch blackness. Oh, he'll do it all right. I hope. Why, it's suicide, murder, or something. Uh, turn the lights off, Don, please. All right. I think this sort of makes me an accessory before the crime or something. Now, for the first night. You ready, Rhoda? Ready. One, two, three. And another. And another. Stop. You nervous, Don? Well, of course I am. Are you all right? Turn on the light and see for yourself. It's Scott Blackstone. Those knives you threw within a quarter of an inch of either side of Rhoda's neck. Mm -hmm. Why, you could have killed her. If your aim had been just a hair's breadth wrong... But his aim was perfect. You might have been killed. Yeah, like Luanita was. Well, who was Juanita? Blackstone's last assistant? No, Don. <laughs> Juanita was a partner in a knife-throwing act at the Rio Rita, a nightclub here in town. Oh, I've heard of that place. Uh, didn't it close rather suddenly? It certainly did. Rhoda and I were there that night. We were sitting in the audience waiting for the knife-throwing act to go on. Of course, we didn't know what was going on back to Juanita, you're my wife, and I want you to remember it. Stop playing around with Lafarge. Oh, you're crazy. I never even look at the guy except in a business way. He owns this cafe. Don't forget that. I'll handle all the business dealings for this team. Oh, I'm sick and tired of your insane jealousy, Carmo. I'll see who I want to see and do what I want to do. You're forcing me to play around with Lafarge with your accusations. <laughs> That's a good one. I suppose you don't flirt with him every chance you get. Oh, you wouldn't even believe me if I told you, but Lafarge asked me to go away with him, and I refused. Uh, that chance of that being true. Oh, I didn't think you'd believe me. You lay off him, or I'll kill you, and him too. I swear I will. Oh, fighting you two? Shut up. Juanita and I are finishing out our week, and then we're quitting. I won't have you fooling around with my wife. We'll discuss this later. <laughs> There's your cue. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present the one and only... Oh, you fool, Carmel. We could have played here for six months. It's the best spot we've had in years, and you know it. We're on. Hurry. The one and only Carmel, the miraculous knife thrower, and his lovely Juanita. is the only knife thrower in the world who will throw knives in the dark. Juanita will stand over there to the right of the stage against that mammoth checkerboard. And Carmo will, out of the darkness, throw knives at her. See the knives he holds in his hand. Each is winged death, if not aimed correctly. In order that you will be able to see the knives as they hit the board, we have arranged colored lights to flicker over the lovely Juanita. Are you ready, Carmo? Places! Turn out the light. And now, out of the darkness, the knives will start flying. Carmo is winding up the throw. There! And now another! And now another! And again. The lights. Turn on the lights. Oh, Juanita's hurt. She's dead. Oh. Look, that last knife is in her heart. Juanita. The knife killed her. Stop him. Stop Carmo. He did it. He killed her. You. You. I'll get you for this. Oh. Call the police, someone. Oh, poor Lafarge. He had to shoot Carmo in self-defense. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry for what has happened. You all saw how I had to shoot this poor man in self-defense. 
We're calling the police. If you will take your seats for a few moments. Lutz? I want to see that board. Why, certainly, but I don't see... Come, Rhoda, up on the stage. Really, Mr. Black. Stay where you are, Lafarge. I want to test that board. Now that your men have carried away poor Juanita, I want to put Rhoda against the board. Blackstone. Do as I say, Rhoda. Lafarge, stand here by me. Well, certainly, but I don't I am see going to you... complete the act that Carmo started. But with the lights on. And I'm going to use no knives. Is this right? Shall I stand between the knives that are already here? That's right, Rhoda. Now I will wind up as though I were going to throw a knife. I let it fly and... And again... Get him. Take Lafarge. Lafarge, you killed Juanita. You killed Carmel. So he couldn't testify that his act was a phony and pin the murder on you. You've got to explain, Blackstone. How could you throw knives without throwing knives? What did Lafarge... Uh, why did Lafarge murder Juanita? When Juanita told Carmo that she had refused to go away with Lafarge, she was telling the truth. Lafarge killed her because of her refusal. And the knife throwing? An old magician's trick. That checkerboard was double, and the in- and inside of it were dozens of knives. They were all timed to fall through slits in the board and look as though they'd been thrown. But they really weren't? No. There isn't anyone in the world who would dare throw knives in the dark at a living person. The flickering lights playing on the girl only served to confuse any aim more than ever. And you knew that. Yes, I did, Don. Karma would have told that the act was a fake if Lafarge hadn't killed him. Lafarge threw that knife out of the darkness and everyone assumed that it was Carmo. He alone knew that it wasn't. That almost was a perfect crime, wasn't it, Blackstone? Almost. But Blackstone knew too much about magic. And that act certainly seems like magic, doesn't it? It certainly does. Blackstone, so you solved another mystery by magic. That's right, Don. Well, I see you have a couple of hats on the table. Will it be a trick that our listeners can do? Absolutely. Because all they need, beside the hats, are some wads of paper. Like those lying between the hats? That's right, Rhoda. First, I pick up two wads of paper. Each represents a thief. And what do the hats represent? The hats are barns where the thieves intend to hide. I drop one thief in a barn on the right, another in the barn on the left. That's fair enough. What are those two other wads of paper on the table? They are the sheep. Exactly five of them down, not two, five. Now the thieves begin to steal the sheep by calling them into the barn. Now watch how I put the five sheep in the barn. You count the left, Rhoda, while Don, you count the right. One in the left... One on the right. One on the left. One on the right. One on the left. And all five sheep are in the barn. Now, just about this time, the thieves hear the farmer coming. What do they do about that? They chase the sheep out again. Count the paper wads as I take them from the hat. One from the left. One from the right. One from the left. One from the right. One from the left. There are the five sheep, loose again. So the farmer went away. And did the thieves call the sheep back? They did. Right into the barn. Here they go, so count them as I put them in the hats. One in the left. One in the right. One in the left. One in the right. And one in the left. So, there we are again. Each thief in a barn with a few stolen sheep. But this time, the farmer came around and looked into the barn. And I suppose he found the thieves and the stolen sheep. No, he didn't. In one barn, he found only the two thieves. Hmm? Here, Don, you look in your hat. Why, there's only two wads of paper. What became of the sheep? They're over in the other barn, Rhoda. All of them. Look in your hat and you find... The the five sheep all in one hat. But but that's impossible. Impossible, but there it is. And if you can't figure it out, Rhoda, I'll be back later to explain. Blackstone, will you please tell us how the thieves arrived in one barn and the sheep in the other? Well, it's very simple when you know how to do it, Rhoda. First, we have seven wads of paper. Two for thieves and five for sheep. That's right. Now, we put one wad in each hat to stand for a thief in each barn. Yes. Then you gather the sheep. Here goes. Five wads of paper. Mm -hmm. One in the left, one in the right, one in the left, one in the right, one in the left. Then you took them out and put them on the table again. That was when the thieves heard the farmer coming. Exactly. 
But in taking the wads from the hats, I started with the hat on the left. Is that important? Very important. Watch what happens. One from the right, one from the left, one from the right, one from the left, one from the right. And all five sheep are loose again. But not the same five wads of paper, Rhoda. This time, I'm going to let you look in the hats and see how matters stand. Well, there should be a thief in each barn. Why, no. There are two wads of paper in my hat. Well, there's none in mine. How's that? Because we are using an odd number, and I put them back starting from the right instead of the left. But I picked them up again the way I did it first. One in the hat on the left. One in the hat on the right. One in the left. And one on the right. One in the left. And there you have them. Two wads of paper in your hat, Don. The two thieves. And five in your hat, Rhoda. The five sheep. And there is the answer to the mystery. If our listeners try it, they will find it works as easily for them as it did for me. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time... This is Blackstone saying good magic. Next time, when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of Death in the Crystal and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 